As a PhD student in electrical engineering, most days you get your work done early, you get to chill at night, play with your cat, play some piano, or even play some video games. But there are nights where you work on a problem early in the day and it really bugs you. You go away, try to tackle it again until you get it, and then it keeps bugging you. For me, tonight is one of those nights. I'm gonna walk you through what a typical day looks like as a PhD student in electrical engineering. For context, I'm doing my PhD in electrical engineering in the topic of high data rate satellite communications. And that's basically just a fancy way of saying, I'm trying to make satellites talk to each other faster. Because if satellites can talk to each other faster, that means we can have faster space-based internet, which means a lot of more people on earth can be using the internet at higher speeds, which would be awesome. But also we can get high resolution images from space. And I promise it's a lot simpler than you think. There's gonna be no equations. In fact, by the end of this video, you're gonna walk out of here and you're gonna be an expert on space communication, or at least some parts of it. Generally in any communication system, you have a transmitter and a receiver. For us humans, the way we communicate is by our mouth, we talk, and by our ears, we listen. Hence, the mouth is basically a transmitting antenna, and the ear is a receiving antenna. Now, many satellites in space do use different antennas for transmitting and receiving, but how nice would it be if you could use the same antenna to be able to talk and listen? In other words, how cool would it be if you just got rid of your ears and you could talk and hear through your mouth? That would probably be a little weird. But what it would do is it would save real space and then you would, it would also save energy. Since now your brain no longer has to give signals to your ears and all the signals can just go to your mouth. It's really expensive to launch a satellite, let alone try to fold it and fit it into a rocket. So ideally you want to get rid of as many things as possible and still do your job properly. For that, we would like to do one antenna. Now, in order to only use one antenna to transmit and to receive, we're gonna need some device that's gonna separate between the transmitted signals and the receiving signals. Now this device is called a circulator and the circulator is gonna be really nice at separating the incoming and outgoing signals. Now again, going back to our analogy, imagine that you're talking from your mouth and someone just comes close to your face and starts yelling. If they're yelling really loud, what you're gonna say won't really be heard by other people because it's essentially gonna get canceled out by all the yelling. And this is basically what the circulator does. It helps separate those two waves from each other. So I basically want to design a circulator for that single antenna at the frequencies that I'm interested in. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. Now remember, the thing I mentioned at first is that I want to design satellites that are gonna be able to talk to each other at really high frequencies because that's gonna allow them to have high data rates and then they'll be able to talk to each other really fast. That's the goal. Now, in order for me to do that, I need to build my circulator to be around those frequencies. You can think of frequency as like the speed at which the satellites talk to each other or the capacity for them to be able to talk to each other faster. So basically, this is the antenna I'm trying to design and then the circulator would feed into it. And then I'm looking at the frequencies over here and I'm seeing that I need to design them at like 217.5 gigahertz and then 295 gigahertz. Now those are really high frequencies. I know you may not know these things, don't worry about it. My approach then is to go on Google Scholar and see if someone has already done the things that I'm trying to do. So I'm gonna go in there, I'm gonna type in circulator design terahertz. And this is basically called a liter literature search. And the idea behind it is like, there's no need to reinvent the wheel if somebody has already gone out there and done the thing you're interested in doing. So I'm gonna basically look for a lot of papers. Now I found this paper that kind of does what I'm interested in doing and they have a nice design that I can try to replicate at the frequencies that I'm interested in. So then I can try to design this thing and see if it works or not. Now, obviously this looks like a shape, like if you've used CAD before, this type of design that I have never used before. And this also uses something called non-zero index metamaterials, which I have never used before. So the problem here is that there's two things I have not done before. So one thing I would do in the past, which was really dumb and you should not do, is I would try to tackle both problems at once. And I would try to like build this type of shape and try to incorporate this new material but that's like really dumb. So instead what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick one of the constraints and I'm gonna choose whichever one's easier. And I'm gonna tackle that one. So I'm gonna basically open a basic electromagnetic simulator and I'm gonna design a horn antenna. And basically this is gonna be like a little dummy model where I'm gonna test it and see if it works. Now, while we wait for the simulation to load, I actually wanna show you a little bit of the dark side of doing a PhD. So let's go and check it out. 